I'm proud of all of my work, apart from that superhero stuff that I did that everybody else likes. Um, I don't have any copies of that in the house anymore. I can't stand to look at it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And we've been hearing rumors that Tom King would be working in the Watchmen universe for about, I think, a year now. We haven't really had any details, but he, he, he's been throwing that the, the breadcrumbs out there. And finally, today, we have confirmation Tom King will be writing a 12-part uh, miniseries for DC Black Label called Warshack. And here to talk with me about that is my good friend Larry from Larry's Comics. How are you doing? Hey, Wes. Thanks for having me on the show. This is exciting. Rorschach coming back. Big question. Is it new school Rorschach or is it old school Rorschach? We're, we exist in a universe that there's Dr. Manhattan. Anything's possible, right? Absolutely. That, that is the question. I think that's that's the part of the mystery when you read the, the press release that was out there. Who's, who's under the mask? It takes place 35 years after the original events of The Watchmen. Two assassins arrive on the scene. One of them is Rorschach. They try to assassinate President Robert Redford. And then uh, I assume the main character of the story is doing a detective work, trying to find the identities of the two would-be assassins and kind of uh, track them down. So is this the original Rorschach that obviously died during at the very end of Watchmen? Is this the new Rorschach that was introduced in Gary Frank and, and Jeff John's Recent sequel to, to Watchmen where basically he ends the son of the psychologist that Rorschach drove insane when he was in prison? Or is this uh, an all-new Rorschach? We, we don't know. Are you excited about this? Well, I, I love Watchmen. I liked, I, I liked the HBO show. I, the part of HBO that I liked was exploring the characters I cared about. I didn't care for the new elements they introduced, but I loved the backstory of where all my guys had been for the these amount of years. Now, did the H? How many years after Watchmen did the HBO show take place? Was that thirty five years too? Are we going into that same time period in the comics? I don't believe so. Do I, I'm know? not really sure. I've never actually got to see the HBO series because I am overseas. But I think this will, if it tries ties into something, I think it will tie into Doomsday Clock, where the characters in the Watchmen uh, come over. But really, anything's on the table because Dr. Manhattan is out there and he can he can change space <clears throat> and time. Rorschach is one of the, the, the grimmest, grittiest, most visceral, violent characters in comics at the street level. And do you think Tom King is, you know we're going to get the Rorschach all cuddle issue. You know, he's going to he's going to sweet up to somebody and we're going to get an entire book of them just laying around and adoring each other, maybe feeding each other. strawberries, going to be and caring and loving. I mean, reciting like, sonnets from nice. uh, Shakespeare, maybe some Sylvia Plath. Definitely going to get, get some a, depressing lyrics. I think we're going to get some of the most sensitive, loving watchmen that we've had in a long time. A kinder, gentler watchman. Yes, a kinder, gentle watchman. Now, um, I did notice J. Lee, J. Lee B. covers. J. Lee is a, that's a, every J. Lee cover is an event. I'm a huge J. Lee fan, so that's right, pretty so nice. I think this could be good, and and uh, people might might know that I'm not the biggest fan of Tom King, specifically his Batman run, uh, his um, Heroes in Crisis. Not a fan of. I thought uh, Strange Adventures, the first issue, started out okay. Definitely uh, not a fan of the second issue, but I do think Tom King is actually a good writer. I don't. I'm sorry, people. If you think I think he's a bad writer, you're wrong. I think he's a good writer. I just think that he has the wrong inspirations, and he falls on uh, too many tropes that are bad writing tropes, specifically with the sonnets, with the the lyrics, and uh, kind of too much filler. He's got a lot of filler in this. And I think with 12 issues of Rorschach and a, and a detective story, I think we will probably see a lot of filler in this. Tom King always gets the benefit of the doubt because of the vision. Mm -hmm. Period. He, th this is the man who wrote the vision. It, it, and the it, first it, six it, issues of Mr. Miracle. It, it, it commands you to at least pick up the first issue and peruse it. One thing, one thing I've noticed, um, I've noticed, the sales of Strange Adventures 3 this week have plummeted. People tend to now pick up Tom King work. They'll check out the number one and they'll decide whether they're going to be done with it 
or they're going to collect, read it in trade. I think Tom King is one of those, I think he's notorious for writing for the trade. When you read the individual books, it, it's very tough to follow. But, you know, I think it comes, when you have all the pieces together, I think it reads a little bit better. Better. So he, he, it's Watchmen, it's Rorschach, it's Tom King. Um, he's going to get a monster order for me for issue one, and then we'll let the chips fall where they may. We'll see how it well, goes. It's obviously not only Tom King. There's some other creators on there. Uh, Jorge Fornes, who he worked with on uh, the end of his Batman run, who also did some fiddling work recently on Daredevil. I'm a fan of his work. Uh, Dave Stewart, Clayton Cowles uh, as well on this. Uh, I think are, Jorge are Fornes writing? is going to – they're the art team. In yeah, letters. the Archie, Jorge Fornes has a has a retro visceral kind of street level type style. You know, the, the, he was on Batman and Daredevil. I mean, he he's going to be absolutely perfect for perfect for the artwork. The art's not what I have any concern about. My concern is, do we get the all cuddle Rorschach issue in issue one, two, three, four, five? Because you know it's coming. There's going to be there's going to be a point in his storyline that is just comatose that's what I, I absolutely does. believe that's going to happen hopefully jorge fornis and dave stewart can kind of bring it back but i, I don't think they quite got that in me not even um clay man can really save tom king's boring stories they, they're they're beautiful to look at and, and quite uh quite boring and repetitive now there is there are some things that um concern me not just uh tom king writing in the watchman universe which i think is a bad fit because it is you know, a, a hyper-political story, but it's also an Alan Moore story. And you can definitely, when you read Tom King's stories, you see low-rent Alan Moore when he's writing. He's trying to kind of replicate a lot of the writing techniques that Alan Moore uses, but he's he's not seasoned at it. He's not very uh, good at using those tools. So I see a big potential of him trying to replicate some of the things Alan Moore did in Watchmen that made it, you know, Many people consider it the greatest comic book, comic story of all times. And, and I think I see him failing again. Do you see him when he's writing that he's trying to like emulate Alan Moore and some of his other heroes? I mean, isn't that the, isn't that the editor's job to get the ingredients to make the cake? I mean, if I was editor on the book, I would say, Tom, we're going to have you write a Rorschach spinoff and fucking write it in a style like Alan Moore. You know, the, I'm sure that's the editorial direction for it. The, the, my stance on the the whole Lisa Alan Moore's characters debate is don't work in corporate comics if you know what I mean. You don't want the company at some point doing whatever the fuck they want with the characters that they own. I mean, th these are these are DC comic properties. They're not Alan Moore properties, and you because they sold them to them, yeah, he did. And I do feel kind of bad for Tom King that he's actually following up Jeff Johns doomsday clock where he and uh gary franks really reintroduced the watchman characters into the dc universe almost seamlessly especially the art by gary franks there's no way jorge porn is in my opinion is going to be able to touch that with the nine panel grids and a lot gary, of the... Frank, gary frank's a master but i i firmly believe that doomsday clock went through massive rewrites at the end and that was that was what caused the delay I follow Gary Frank on social media and when it, it didn't line up when he'd say, I've just passed in the last page of this issue. And then there'd be a three month gap. I think they were trying to accommodate Bendis with his mm -hmm. Legion story. And they had to take like one of Jeff John, one of the greatest, greatest sub threads in modern comics was um, satin girl in jail and flashing the Legion ring to Bruce Wayne in prison. And, you know, just how is the Legion coming back into our continuity? And it all just got scrapped for Bendis. And I think that they made Gary Frank redraw that fucking thing and they had to rewrite it. And I don't think, I think doomsday clock kind of ended on a sputter. The ending was, I like how it ended, but the, the process of the last, Three or four issues seems like they're accommodating Sir Michael Bendis and See, his I thought bag of issue trash. ten was the high point in the very best issue of the series, but yeah, I do I liked agree how, with you. I liked how it Eleven and twelve how it landed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weren't, I, weren't I the liked, greatest. I liked I liked 
the end product, but I felt like with the delays and I just it it just so you could you could right tell that uh, Wally West was supposed to play heavily in that story. Like he was introduced mm-hmm. earlier, he was the one that could see Doctor Manhattan. They were they're having um they're they're they, they were encountering each other and things like that. And you could tell that he was supposed to play heavily in it, and then they just kind of dropped him. Well, that that the the satin girl plot thread that it was also rumored that Jeff Johns was going to be bringing back the Legion, and then mm-hmm. when Bendis got his fucking dirty meat hooks in at DC, he obviously you know wrestled that away from Jeff Johns, and that whole plot thread had to whatever the, his original plan was for Satin Girl, Bendis just had to you know fucking rip it out of the entire book, and I think it had negative results. I agree with you. I, I wish they would have stuck with the rebirth plan. I, I think it was uh, producing the best DC comics, you know, just as a line that, that we had seen in a, uh, quite some time. And it, it, it's too bad that he kind of got sidelined in favor of uh, Brian Michael Bennis, Tom what, King, what, what, Scott Snyder. Do you, know, you know why Jeff Johns got sidelined? Jeff Johns lost. Jeff, Jeff Johns is a masterful um, DC writer. He, he's one of my favorite DC writers, but he lost his heart. His heart is writing TV shows and working for Hollywood. He's one of those guys that if he just got up every day and embraced comic books, imagine if Jeff Johns just wanted to write comic books and that's all he cared about was getting into the office and writing comics. He'd be, you know, editor in chief overseeing the entire DC line. He just, for some reason, you know, Hollywood must be pretty well, seductive. They all just want to. Think- Comics really even pay, even if you're Jeff Johns, they don't quite pay like Hollywood. Mm. It's all about the money, Jeff. What about love? Come back for love. What are you talking about? He's got he's got kids to feed, probably. I'm talking as a fan, man. I've 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 loved almost everything that he's done, and I just fucking hate the oh poor me. I'll come back, I'll begrudgingly come back to do this one shot because then I get get gotta get back to writing my shitty TV show. I mean, I don't. Hey, care. I don't care about. I'm with you. Shows. I wish Jeff I'm Johns selfish. was all for Jeff us, Johns and we didn't back. have to share him because yep, he's. Uh, nobody gets to be characters quite like him. Maybe, it, it, maybe the it, Diddy. It's it's an effect in current comics. It's the Robert Kirkman effect. Everybody is chasing that you know TV show deal money. Like it's not. Where's the love, people? Where, where are the where are the people are doing this for the love of comic books and just want to do there? I want. I want that A-list creator that their goal in life is just to be writing the book that they're writing and they're, they're putting everything into it. Now it just seems um, comics are just a step. We're, we're just a stepping stone, a means to an end so that they can get on a shitty Netflix show. Something to be said for being the, be the commander of, be the, be, be the commander of the greatest comic book in the comic book industry, don't be one of the low-level writers on a fucking shitty Netflix show. Make comics your priority. That'd be just fantastic. Well, I'm excited that Tom King has his eye outside of comics. Obviously, he's going to be writing the script for the New Gods movie. I hope it's wildly successful, and he exits stage right, stage right and decides comics isn't worth his time. But, you know, getting back to Tom King, and I, I do want to read this one. Just one. Tom King fell off a cliff at Mr. Miracle number seven. Before yes, I did. want the old Tom King back. I want the, the, the pre Mr. Miracle seven Tom King guy back. Now I'll be quiet. <laughs> and <laughs> this sorry. is what uh, the, the quote we got from King in the press release about what his work is going to be. And this is what has me the most nervous. Even even uh, him trying to replicate what um, Alan Moore did, and, and him following up with Jeff Johns did with Doomsday Clock. This is the part that has me scared. And uh, hopefully you can talk me off the cliff on this one. This is what Tom King said. This is a very political work. It's an angry work. We're so angry all the time now. We have to do something with that anger. It's called Rorschach, not because of the character Rorschach, (sighs) but because what you see in these characters tells you more about yourself than about them. Uh, So, oh, okay, cool. So Rorschach is going to be a 12-issue limited series about how fucking people who are pieces of shit. That's basically what it's going to be. Yes, whatever character gonna, you identify with, you know, will say if you're a good person or a bad person. I don't know. Awesome. Uh, so. Sounds great. Anyway, at, at like I said, I tr- I train. 
I train my mind to separate art from artist, and I love comic books more than I love any fucking comic book creator. And I'm excited about a Rorschach twelve issue. Well, folks, I'm gonna. I think we just lost Larry. I think he might have had a. Uh, I think his battery battery ran out. If I'm being completely honest, this has happened to us in the past. But I, I think you all kind of get the gist. And I and I am not very excited about that very last message we got there. I do not see Tom King having the temperament. The, the skill to handle something like that and actually execute it in a meaningful way. I think it will become very self-deprecating. It'll become very much about Tom King and where Tom King is in his life right now, which a lot of his work seemed to do, especially after the great success he had on Vision and the, the very first half of Mr. Miracle and sort of kind of the beginning of, of Batman, which which did fall off, but, but started out uh, pretty okay. So there you have it, folks. That is the news that we have Tom King, Jorge Fornes, Dave Stewart, Clayton Cowles will be bringing back Rorschach at a 12-issue uh, miniseries on DC Black Label. Who is this new Rorschach? Is it going to be the original Rorschach from Alan Moore's Watchmen? Is it going to be the new Rorschach from Jeff John's Doomsday Clock? Is it going to be an all-new Rorschach? I think that's what it's hinting at in the press release. Of course, I could be wrong. We don't really have any information. We do have some preview art, and you have seen it here uh, during the video. Uh, tell me, are you guys excited? Is, does this, uh, you know, does this hit you in the field spots? Does this, this get you hot and bothered to go out to your comic shop and get an issue of Rorschach number one? Are you that excited about going back to the Watchmen universe? Or has Tom King kind of soiled his own reputation at this point where you don't really trust him? Me personally, I am going to check it out because I thought his first issue of uh, Strange Adventures was, was pretty damn good. The second issue, not so much. I'm not surprised that, that Larry said that people had kind of fallen off that series. I would have fallen off that series if I didn't have my channel here, if I'm being completely honest. But I am going to check it out. I'm hoping for success. I do like the Watchmen universe. In my opinion, it's not the greatest comic of all time, but it's certainly a seminal moment in comic book history and a very good story by one of the best writers in the history of comics, if not the best writer in the history of comics. And I will absolutely give Alan Moore that. So following Alan Moore, following Jeff Johns, two of the best writers of their generations, if not the best writers of their generations, is no small feat you know, for Tom King, and uh, hopefully he's up to the challenge. I'm hoping for success here. I do think Tom King is a good writer. I just think that he has been in a funk lately, and I hope this is the series that finally he kicks it out. Less filler, less stupid tropes with, with um, poems and song lyrics and all this kind of depressing narrative. More focus on characters more focus on terrific storytelling, and I think that's where he'll find success, just like he did with Vision in the first half of um, Mr. Miracle. And that will be the video today. I'm sorry that, that Larry fell out on us. The battery on his phone definitely died on us, but I do appreciate him showing up and giving his, uh, his opinions on that, and he'll certainly be on the channel here again. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you all later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.